Hi, everybody. Dan Ullman, Mike Beer, the DRF race of the day for Saturday, June the 13th, race number nine at Belmont Park, the grade one Ogden Phipps. We're going a mile and a 16th. That's one turn at Belmont Park for the Phillies and Mares. And before we get to the analysis, let me remind you to please try those DRF mobile past performances experience drf's classic pps with true mobile a- mobile interactive access anywhere anytime on your phone get the exclusive lifetime buyer speed figure graph and lots more learn more at drf.com slash mpps here's the field for the grade one ogden phipps you can download free formulator past performances for this race on the race of the day event page at drf.com access them handicap along with us we've got the top two finishers from the apple oh the second and third place finishers from the apple blossom the five ollie's candy the two point of honor one's got speed one's a closer point of honor might get a setup this time again yeah, we'll see if they go um, fast enough uh, in front of her. It seems like there's at least uh, you know enough pace for her to get a fair trip in this race. Let's take a look at the time form U.S. pace projector. They're expecting Ali's Candy to make the lead with Blamed and She's a Julie not too far away. If I'm riding She's a Julie, if I'm Ricardo Santana Jr., I want to put her on the lead. I know she didn't break last time out. I think she has some things to to answer as it pertains to her current form, but she loves a mile and a 16th, and I know she can get forward if she breaks. Yeah, I sort of agree with you there, Dan. Um, I think they will get aggressive with her if she breaks. You know, the thing with Ollie's candy, I mean, if you're making the pace projector and you're using the apple blossom, well, yeah, she's going to be on the lead if they ride her like they did in that race. But with Ollie's candy, you don't have to do that. She's a very versatile horse. She does not need the lead. And drawing outside the other two pace horses might give the jockey options to sit in the clear and hope to get first run on the true closers. One of the true closers is the number one, Pink Sands. Pink Sands really found her niche in her last two races at Gulfstream. They uh, cut her back to uh, a one-turn mile, seven furlong races. She got paces. She came running. Here's her performance in the inside information where she came from far, far back to not only get up, but to get away from the field, beating two next out winners, including blamed who's back in this spot do you think a mile and a 16th is a little bit far for her or is she just a one-turn horse that needs pace yeah i think it's more maybe a one-turn kind of late running thing she's won at a mile and a 16th before around two turns i just feel like she's probably better in situations like that where we just watched where she can just sort of sit back with a pace in front of her and make one run listen i think she's run well in her last two starts dan um but i just don't really like her in this race Point of Honor, the number two, hinted at a lot of potential last year as a three-year-old. She won the Black Eyed Susan. She placed in both the Coaching Club American Oaks and in a very sloppy edition of the Alabama. And that might be a key factor because it has rained on Friday in New York where you're expecting a little bit more precipitation and this track could be wet. I like how George Weaver's handled her this year, Mike. I think the first start, the seven furlong race, that was just a short horse running at a distance, way too short for her. She showed a lot of improvement in the Apple Blossom and she's still got upside. Yeah, she really does. I mean, she was she was actually pretty good as a three-year-old when you go back and start looking at it, Dan. She had a, a really good campaign, even though it was over in August. Um, and yeah, I agree with you the way that they've handled this year. You know, the prep off the layoff, I thought she ran great in the Apple Blossom. I know that there was a fast pace in front of her, um, but she made an early move in there. She was wide all the way. She never stopped coming through this race. I thought she ran great last time. Um, and the other thing is, you know, this race just Considering all the talent in this division this year, this race just did not come up nearly as strong as it could have. I think she's a huge player in here. She's a Julie won the grade one La Troyenne last year at a mile and a 16th. And then they ran her in the big races at a mile and an eighth. And while she's good at a mile and an eighth, I think she's more effective at a mile and a 16th. Her most recent start at Churchill Downs, she has several ready-made excuses. A, the long layoff. B, she missed the break. C, she was in against a race where there was no pace and she was trying to rally into it. D, she was facing Dunbar Road, who very likely would be the favorite in this race. Yeah, just all kinds of excuses for her race off the layoff last time. I would, you know, I'm certainly willing to just put a line through it, considering how badly she started in there. Um, You know, since the La Troyenne, things haven't gone great for her. I'm still of the belief, I don't think you agree with me on this, but I'm still of the belief that, you know, going nine furlongs in all four of those uh, last four starts last year against, you know, basically the top horses in the division, I just don't think that really worked out well for her. She's better going shorter. Um, If she breaks this time, I expect her to be much more competitive. 
My E would be, I, I agree in that we disagree on she's a Julie's current form. I just don't <laughs> think she was very good after winning the La Troyenne. We'll see. I mean, at eight to one, she at eight to one fits very, very well in this race. Eight to one on David Aragona's morning line. I could certainly see a play there at eight to one. But again, she has to prove to me that she's gotten back to being the good. She's a Julie. Four is blamed. Bill Mott took the blinkers off, blamed last time out. She responded with this victory at Oaklawn Park. It was nice to see blamed relax a little bit because she'd kind of been a speed horse early in her career. She sat just off the early lead to over in the stretch powered clear the horse that she beat motion emotion is another horse that just seemingly is a bit off form right now blame's going to be facing tougher and if she has to push she's a julian ali's candy it could work against her yeah it could i mean i agree that it was nice to see her you know relax a little bit and track a pace last time but that was not a fast pace um not a great field either i don't know Dan. i'm just not much of a fan of hers and i don't really like her at all in this race Ali's Candy is the morning line favorite, the number five grade one stakes winner going two turns at a mile and a 16th in the Clement Hirsch. Here was her performance in the Apple Blossom. She ran hard every step of the way. She has the lead turning into the stretch and she just battles it out gamely with a really nice mare. CC on the outside is just going to get up to pip Ali's Candy at the wire. You'll see Point of Honor come with her run to finish third. Ali's Candy ran great in this race. We'll see if she can do it again shipping into New York but she should be right there when they swing into the lane. Yeah, I mean, I guess based off of this race, and maybe some of her others as well, she's just the horse to beat in here because she has speed, but again, doesn't need the lead. She's very versatile. Um, she just ran really, really well in the Apple Blossom. I don't know if she can back it up, Dan. Um, I guess the one thing that concerns me a little bit about it is that she ran so hard in there, as did CeCe, and we've already seen um, CeCe come back and maybe be a little bit flat in her next start. I just sort of wondered if it would happen to Ollie's Candy as well, but... I think she's the horse to beat in here. It's a fair point to be sure because you know she's going to be a relatively short price. Golden Award completes this short but pretty select field. Second last time out in the Grade 3 Royal Delta. Let's take a look at that race. I didn't think it was the strongest race in the world. Golden Award caught a sloppy track and she's going to run second. She didn't have the greatest trip in the world, Mike, but I just don't really think she liked a wet track and there's a chance she's going to get another one on Saturday. Yeah, that, that concerns me too. I, I, I don't, I think I'm going to give her that wet track excuse. I don't really love the horse that beat her in there, cookie dough. Um, but, you know, the wet track, I think, is a legitimate excuse for her. And listen, I, I don't think she's, you know, you know, one of the main, main contenders in here, but she's not that far off some of these horses. I, I don't know. I, I think she's a player in this race. Let's take a look at our top picks for the grade one Ogden Phipps. Mike, you like point of honor in here. She just seems progressive. My one question is, do you think she could be slightly better at a mile and an eighth? Uh, we saw her really get good at those distances last year, but give her pace at a mile and a 16th in a field like this, you know, she's going to be running yeah. at the end. She's my second pick. Yeah. I mean, I didn't worry about the distance, but I suppose that could be something that could work against her in here. I just think she fits this race really well. Um, and like I said, I, I thought she ran great in the Apple Blossom, Dan. I, I like her in this race. I thought she ran very well in the Apple Blossom as well. I thought Ali's Candy ran very well. I hope Ali's Candy is not regressed. She'll likely get the jump on Point of Honor turning into the lane. Yeah. 2536 for Mike, 5264 for me. It's the grade one Ogden Phipps. Your Saturday DRF race of the day with an approximate post time of 536 Eastern. Good luck.